All right, so let's talk about how you calculate percent yield. Now, it's important to understand that percent yield has a particular formula that you need to know. And in order to calculate percent yield, you need to understand that it is the actual yield divided by the theoretical yield multiplied by 100% in order to get an answer with units of percent. This way, if what you actually get, this is obviously the thing that you actually get. This is also called experimental yield. If you get more than you thought you were going to get, because this is what you calculate you're supposed to get, then you should have over 100%, because if this is bigger than this, you get a number that's over 100%. If this is less than this, then you get a number under 100%, because if your actual, what you actually get is less than what you thought you were going to get, yes, you should have less than 100% yield. So... Let's do a quick answer for this one just to show how you get that answer of 129%. So the experimental, a.k.a. actual yield, is not this, but this. So this is experimental yield, 12.55 grams. So we take 12.55 grams on top. You, when you calculated that you should get, this is your theoretical yield. So this 9.74 grams goes on the bottom. And we're going to times that by 100%. So if we do our calculator, bring it in here, 12.55 divided by 9.74 gives that. And then when you times it by 100%, that's the actual percentage. So four sig figs, three sig figs, we need to round to three sig figs. So your first sig fig is this one, your second sig fig is this two, and your final sig fig is this number eight right here and since this eight is next let me make sure it's easier to see maybe oh something like that okay but either way it, that last digit is next to a oh that makes it easy to see yes that last number eight is next to a five so you gotta round up sorry that last number eight is next to an eight so you gotta round it up which means 129 percent so i'll write the raw unrounded number of 128.8501027 percent i'm going to round that to 129 percent yield. All right, so let's say go about the actual calculation of the percent yield. Now, for the uh, 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 more concrete uh, uh, use of this, we can have a look at what it looks like when you have an actual situation involving mm, doing some stoichiometry. So, how do you know what to do with this? First of all, notice that it gives you the mass of one chemical and the mass of another different chemical, and it asks you about another third chemical, because it says you got this many grams, what's your percent yield? So what we're going to do is we're going to do calculations to figure out how much of this we should have made, and then compare it to how much we actually did make. So. Let's look at what this reaction is then, because we're given information about one chemical and asked about a different chemical. We know it's stoichiometry. We've got to do some balanced equations. So what that's going to look like is writing the calculation. So xenon plus fluorine gas makes xenon tetrafluoride. Yes, xenon is a noble gas. Yes, we told our students that noble gases don't react to stuff, but that's under normal natural conditions. In the lab, there are certain ways to force them to have a chemical reaction. So um, xenon plus fluorine under the right conditions will do this. Now let's make this work. we got to put a 2 right here in order to make it 4 fluorines, 4 fluorines, 1 xenon, 1 xenon. So okay, now it's a balanced equation. That's good. Now we need our molar masses because we're going to be doing the converting from mole, grams of this to moles of this to moles of the product. Sorry, I pointed to the wrong chemical. We get the idea. We're going to take our starting reactants, and we're going to convert grams to moles of the starting reactant, moles of the starting reactant to moles of the product, and then moles of the product to grams of the product. So uh, that's, again, where we're kind of going with this. Now, let's go ahead and do that xenon molar mass. Right here, 131 point, uh, let's get that into view, 131.29. So 131.29 grams per mole, because you round to the hundredths place. 
fluorine gas. Fluorine gets rounded to 19.00 when you round to the hundredths place, so fluorine is 2 times 19.00, which is 38.00 grams per mole. And finally, xenon tetrafluoride. That's 131.29 plus 4 times 19.00 equals 131.29 pl oops plus 4 times 19 equals 207.29 grams per mole for xenon tetrafluoride. Okay, so that's all our molar masses for all the stuff we're going to be looking at. So with that done, we can now go ahead and set up our calculation. I'm going to calc we need to know how many grams of this to expect and compare it to what we actually got. So there is our mass of one reactant, there's our mass of our other reactant. So let's write them down. 130 grams of xenon, 100 grams of fluorine. Yeah, by the way, I'm aware that it just occurred to me now that earlier I wrote FL for fluorine. I don't know why I did that. But anyway, uh, the next thing to do is to convert these through the same steps that we usually do, which is grams to moles of the thing you're starting with to moles of the product to grams of the product. So let's do that. We're going to go from grams of xenon to moles of xenon. And I put it this way because I need grams of xenon to cancel grams of xenon. And then we're going to go, just like it says here, from moles of xenon to what we're trying to find. So moles of xenon tetrafluoride. And then we're going to go from moles of xenon tetrafluoride to grams of xenon tetrafluoride. And then we're going to follow the same procedure for this other one. From grams of fluorine to moles of fluorine. From moles of fluorine to moles of xenon tetrafluoride. And then from moles of xenon tetrafluoride to grams of xenon tetrafluoride. Oops, that didn't turn out very well, but one gets the idea. Well, I fill in the numbers. This is molar mass of xenon. So one mole of xenon has a mass of 131.29 grams. Let's see, in xenon, there's no... There's no um, coefficient here, so we just put a 1 next to moles of xenon. For moles of xenon tetrafluoride, there's no coefficient, so you also put a 1. And then for xenon tetrafluoride, 1 mole is that many grams, so 1 mole has a mass of 207.29 grams. And then for this other one, we follow the same thing, so 1 mole of F2 is 38.00 grams of F2. We've got that right here. Um, xenon tetrafluoride, that's 1 because there's no coefficient. Fluorine, there's a 2 there, so we put a 2 here. And then for xenon tetrafluoride, again, 1 mole is two, has a mass of 207.29 grams. So we do our two calculations, and we're going to pick the smaller one as our answer. 130 divided by 131.29 equals, that doesn't do anything, so times 207.29 equals, and we get that for an answer. Let me make it visible. Okay, so there you go. 205.25, blah, 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 three sig figs, five sig figs, infinite sig figs, five sig figs. So we got around to three sig figs. So we're going to call this 205 grams of xenon tetrafluoride. Now let's do this one. 100 divided by 30. Let's see. So divided by 38 equals divided by 2 equals, times 207.29 equals, that it will be equal to 272.75 grams of xenon tetrafluoride. 
So between the two, this is a smaller number, so we want to use this for our calculation, because this is the amount that's actually going to get made, or at least the amount that should be made. Okay, so yeah, not the bigger number, the smaller number. That's your theoretical yield. I'm even going to write that theoretical yield. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our experimental, aka actual yield, experimental divided by theoretical yield. times 100% is going to equal our answer with units of percent. So that means we're going to take our experimental yield of 145 grams, that's what we actually got, and we're going to divide it by what we thought we were going to get, 205 grams of xenon tetrafluoride. And that will give us 145 divided by 205 70.73 and some other stuff. So we're going to round to three sig figs because of the fact that we have three sig figs for our starting numbers. Not because I rounded these to three sig figs. So don't worry about the fact that these have three sig figs. It's because the numbers we started with had three sig figs and this had three sig figs anyway. So that's what limits us to three significant figures. Um, so this is the raw calculator answer. We're going to round it to three sig figs. So that's your first sig fig, your second sig fig, your third sig fig. Oops, I forgot the times 100 times 100% equals 70.7%. Oops, I misspelled the yield. Yield of xenon tetrafluoride. All right, well, there you go. And uh, the last question you'll have at the end is going to follow essentially that same principle. You'll go through all the same steps and through similar measures reach hopefully the correct answer. All right, there you have it.